Now, first on the Western Slope, you're watching KREX 5 News at 10 p.m. Good evening and thank you for watching KREX 5 News. I'm Austin Sack. Mesa County's District Attorney's Office and the Critical Incident Response Team have concluded its investigation into the officer-involved shooting from June 25th of last year. Corporal Taylor Schreiner will not have charges against him in the matter of the shooting of Texas resident Reginald Hansen on June 25th. Now, two days before the shooting, Hansen came to Grand Junction from his home in Texas. Then on June 25th, he arrived at St. Mary's Hospital acting erratically and threatening an employee with a handgun. Hansen was told approximately 10 times to drop the weapon, and he was told if he did not, he would be shot. According to the report, Corporal Schreiner responded to what appears to be a suicide by cop situation. Hansen is now deceased, but he had survived the incident. He would have been charged with menacing as well as attempted first degree murder. For the full findings of the investigation, you can head to westernsoapnow.com. And Colorado, like the rest of the country, is in the midst of a fentanyl crisis. To prevent deaths, lawmakers will soon unveil legislation to crack down on fentanyl. The bill would increase penalties for high-level dealers of fentanyl. It will include an enhancement penalty for distribution resulting in death and medical-assisted treatments for low-level offenders. Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser says the bill is a much-needed stride forward to remove this deadly poison from our streets. Governor Polis met with state lawmakers and public health experts to unveil the new bill. I know that we're all sick and tired of hearing the news of yet another life that's lost because of fentanyl. This bill will help get distributors off the street. It'll provide law enforcement the resources to address fentanyl. And it also make sure that it provides a path for help for those who are addicted. Mesa County's District Attorney Dan Rubenstein has fought for increased jail time for fentanyl dealers that distributed resulting in death. Rubenstein believes though through this legislation, Mesa County will be able to respond aggressively to dealers taking lives. And new tonight, pharmacists and doctors are pushing back after the state Senate passed a bill authorizing off-label drugs for coronavirus treatment. Now, some pharmacists were upset over the initial plan, which required them to fill prescriptions for off-label drugs like ivermectin. They say filling prescriptions for certain patients can have harmful effects. Ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine, the issues with those is they have many, many drug and disease state interactions. So there may be patients who are on medications that could potentiate the effects of these and a common side effect might be um, a heart arrhythmia that could potentially be deadly to folks. The new bill that passed allows pharmacists to exercise their judgment in filling prescriptions to address safety issues according to Republican leaders. And the Club 20 Watershed and Wildfire Summit began this week at Colorado Mesa University. We stopped in to find out how the state of Colorado is moving forward with its fire mitigation projects. Club 20, a not-for-profit group in Grand Junction, represents 22 counties in the Western Slope area. This week, they are hosting a summit to discuss wildland fires and fire mitigation strategies to better protect the Western Slope. Club 20 will meet once again tomorrow, and Grand Junction can expect to hear from Senator Michael Bennett, as well as Congresswoman Lowen Bober, about federal funding and mitigation projects. Now, while most are running out of a burning building, firefighters face the flames. I spent the day with the men and women of the Lower Valley Fire District to find out how a new truck will impact its services. Tim Strobel has fought fires with the Lower Valley Fire District for more than two years. And as he says, the training never stops. You can never train too hard for a job that can kill you. Here at the Lower Valley Fire District, in an emergency, when you hear this sound, Firefighters have under a minute to get fully dressed and then they're ready to go. Lower Valley Fire District responds to calls from Glade Park all the way into Utah. With a large area to protect, firefighters at Lower Valley respond to a lot of calls, the good and the bad. The bad ones seem to be the ones that stick with you. I asked Trouble, why would someone want to become a firefighter? He says the most common answer is to help people. Because that's why we're all in this industry. But it's really like making that impact on somebody, like making their day go from really crappy to a little bit better. As crews work to mitigate potential fire fuels to make neighborhoods safer, a common challenge rural fire crews battle is fires in an urban interface. And that's when uh, urban sprawl is uh, built out into the where the woods are. To better access urban neighborhoods, the Wildland Urban Interface truck has the capabilities of a larger truck 
combined with the sleek maneuverability of a smaller one. We call it the Wooey. The wait list for the Wooey fire truck is two years out. Until then, a Type 1 engine truck will respond to urban wildfires. So this is going to be our engine. This is what we're going to use for structure fires here. We also take this on motor vehicle accidents um, because we, in this setup, we have like our extrication tools back here. A fire can be life changing, but next time you see one, take a second and remember the brave men and women putting their life on the line. I think, you know, a lot of it goes back to my grandfather. Like that resonated with me to like always help somebody that you're never too busy to do that. So I, I don't view myself as a hero. Um, I'm just doing what's right. And as a result of Russia's conflict in Ukraine, Governor Polis signed a letter with governors from across the country urging the U.S. Congress to suspend the federal gas tax. The average, mid, the average of mid-grade gasoline in Colorado currently costs $3.98, while the national average has increased to $4.24. To help provide savings and real relief for Americans fighting to keep up with gas prices, Governor Polis has called on the federal government to suspend the approximate $0.18 cents a gallon gas tax we all pay. Anything we can do, and it's all temporary, because remember, this is the money that funds our roads, so it can't go away forever, but absolutely for a period of time, whether it's six months or a year. Now, if you are struggling to find the cheapest gas in the Grand Valley, visit our website, westernslopenow.com, and look for Gas Tracker. And speaking of gas, a local family received a lift this spring, the keys to a car. You Uber and Lyft have... Uber and Lyft have been the routes taken by Army veteran Kanisha Fernandez and her family of six for months. After the family was nominated by the local Volunteers of America Branch Caliber Collision refurbished a car for them. The giveaway is part of a recycled rides program that repairs and donates vehicles to individuals in need of reliable transportation. With a baby on the way, she feels relieved that her family will be able to get where they need to be. One car is better than no car here, so... Definitely being able to get around transportation is definitely like our main priority. So I definitely appreciate everything that everybody here has done for us. Any volunteer organization can nominate a recipient. The volunteer organization just needs to go online, fill out the application, and we'll get them in touch with the right people to find as many cars as we can to give away. Caliber Collision and their partners have donated cars nationwide for 12 years, but the giving doesn't stop with the vehicle. The Fernandez family was also surprised with extras for the kids, including school supplies, toys, and a day at Bananas Fun Park. Now, what started as a local business owner looking for housing for an 80-year-old woman seeking shelter outside his business turned into a community-wide project. Fox 4's Demetrius Gamble had the pleasure of meeting with the CEO of the court-appointed special advocate of the 7th Judicial District to break down this project. Attention all outdoor enthusiasts, Color of Parks and Wildlife is reminding people that it's time to renew your fishing license. An annual license is valid March 1st through March 31st of next year and are required for everyone 16 and older. A season pass is about $37, but there is also day passes available. Out-of-staters will also need to get a license. You can buy yours online or at any CPW office. And for those of you that enter to win a $200 gas card, we now have tonight's winner. Congratulations to Carol Hurst. You have won a $200 gas card. You have until the end of the newscast to claim your card by calling 970-242-5000. And be sure to leave a voicemail. You have two weeks to pick up the card. And hey, if you'd like to win a chance to win your very own $200 gas card, you can simply enter by heading to westernsoapnow.com or go to Ed Bozarth, Mark Miller, Chevrolet Buick here in town. And when CARIX 5 News returns, Chief Meteorologist Russ Pappas will have your complete weather forecast. Thanks, Russ, and thank you at home for watching Fox 4 News this evening. I'm Austin Sack, and for the latest news, weather, and sports, log on to our web channel, westernslopenow.com. And if you aren't watching March Madness and you haven't got any news fix yet, you can join us on CBS for KRX 5 News at 10. Until then, from all of us here at Fox 4 News, good night and a good tomorrow.